It's Allie of An Ordinary Mom, and it is a Friday morning, and I am actually standing in my messy closet um, because it's one of the only quiet places in my house ever. Okay, nothing special on the agenda today, just um, a bunch of cleaning, actually. Okay, so maybe that's kind of special. My in-laws are coming up to visit tomorrow, and we haven't seen them for a while, and we'd like the house to be, you know, at least a level above chaos, so I'm going to step out of my nice quiet closet. I'm going to do my best to rally my troops to actually work together and um, cooperate and keep some good attitudes today. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get some outside time too because summer has hit Minnesota. So hopefully we can get outside, get some water play maybe, um, yeah, get some sun and uh, we'll see what happens. Come along! What do you have? Lego. Lego. Legos. Um, yeah, sometimes we wake up and the rooms look like this. And so I think we'll start with this room. Hi. The other <laughs> one's not dirty that much. <laughs> Good. Um, but yes, we definitely have some cleaning to do today in between some fun. You writing on the pillow? Faith was serenading Max earlier. Yes. With our, our little industrial fan trying to blow some cold air up those stairs because it's really hot up there. It's so it hit... humidly bad. I can't, I don't want to explain. It felt like sweat in the air, but like steam and like dry, but at the same time wet sweat and it smelled and it was so hot. <laughs> it I didn't get heat Yeah, it yeah pretty much smells like a uh, locker room up there. Look, here's another area. Okay, since we caught it on camera, we'll just show you the state of our entryway often looks like this. <laughs> Welcome to our house of shoes. Uh, so that's on the agenda today. She's back. <laughs> Our day was about to go downhill. Yeah, and are uh, you gonna make like a line while all of the kids go to stay? Well, you only have to stay back there. Yeah. <laughs> nice archery tournament. This is just practice, buddy. Hope he's practicing. Wait, you can't go in front. Oh, danger zone, danger zone. Daniel? No, you have to be back here. See, she has an arrow on her bow. Don't even. Nope, you have to stay behind the shooting line. See here? You gotta stay behind it. Oh dear. That one's been melting down a lot lately. Uh, uh, <coughs> I'm having a hard time. Uh, 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 hey, 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 hey. Uh, uh, uh. I don't really talk about it much. Um, not just here, you know, social media, any, even just with friends, because um, most of my friends can't relate. They can relate to parenting. They can relate to just off days with kids. And I mean, every parent has off days with kids. I had off days with kids with all my first kids. Um, my five-year-old has an um, ASD level two diagnosis. Um, 
it says it says ASD level two a comma requiring substantial support <laughs> um, and I think that's because it, the whole requiring substantial support I think it was because you know he he needed um, quite a bit of speech therapy and um, OT for like sensory regulation and stuff um, and he's come a long way in that so I'm not sure if if the diagnosis will change or not, but anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> I don't even know how much of this I will keep in a video and share. Um, every time I think about making a video talking about our autism story, I think I really, there's some things I just want to get out even just for my own um, processing of it all, I guess, which is like a constant thing, right? I've been dealing with this for some years now, and I just always feel like I'm still just processing it all. Um, yeah, anyway, mom's taking a moment out on the porch. Um, well, he is uh, calm and okay, he put on an episode of Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. Um, he's watching it with some of his uh, bear siblings, and everything is <sighs> calm at the moment. Um, so I stepped out on the porch to just have a few moments to think and pray and think and. Um, anyway, <laughs> we're going to get back to it. We're going to redeem the rest of the day. Um, the truth of the matter is uh, some days are hard and sometimes they come in frequent bursts, one right after another. And I love this kid like crazy, um, but I have never been challenged so much in my motherhood and parenting like I have with this one particular child and um, some days are hard <laughs> and today is one of them <laughs> are you being silly on the big bunny <laughs> did you discover you could make a silly noise <laughs> he's so silly No, we don't dump out milk. Just drink it. No, we don't dump out milk. Do you want to drink? In your mouth? No, you just want to play with it? Whoa, jeez. You're kind of wild and crazy this morning. Here. Here, you hold it and drink. You do want to drink. Oh, yeah, show me that geode. So, ooh, that is so cool. We should wash it to be more shiny. Yeah. So, the kids were just breaking one of our extra geodes that we've had for several years now. Look at these pieces, look like glass. That is cool. My favorite piece is yeah. this piece. Like this one's for, oh, yeah. for decoration. That is room. really, That's really neat. So cool. And we still have this one here. I hope Scott that we can't break this one. <laughs> we had an extra break brick. I dropped the brick on it so and it split in half. Or mom, show them the ground right here. That Ooh, did this. It. Cool too. It's not being anymore. It did this. I thought you were oh, I thought you were <laughs> saying the crack. I'm like, this no. This did didn't. this. But like it feels like you feel less resistance hitting the sidewalk than you do hitting this rock. <laughs> that one. I wonder how we're gonna. A lot. Yeah. I can go grab another geode. Need a sledgehammer. Yeah, they well, have the same sound because well, they make fun no, gifts. So let's save a couple. Okay. The other ones got cracked. One of them was more around this size, but it. Do you guys remember when we found these geodes? Yes. 
Yeah. Faithy, do you, Faithy, you don't remember you were a baby. <laughs> we found these geodes in a creek in Bloomington, Indiana. While we were there. You've been there? Yeah. Um, but you were a baby, so you don't remember. We were staying in Indiana for your oldest brother Ian's radiation for part of his cancer treatments. Um, and we took an afternoon creaking, went exploring, and found a bunch of geodes. And so we came home with a giant box of rocks. And these ones still haven't been broken open until today. One of them had been cracked a little and like a piece had come off. But it was like you couldn't see the inside of it. It was just a little piece that had chipped off. So. Yeah, let's build them. Really? Built it. In fact, it's putting it back together. Very cool. Oh, let me see this piece it's again. Like this one is so cool. This is like a puzzle. Look at those dirty feet. Oh, but girls have to hop in the bathtub. Don't have Can you still see the curve? I mean, I could see it from inside. I just looked up and was like, wow. levels and swirling. There's tons over here. Up here over the house. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. It's surreal. It looks like something out of a movie. It does. Like that swirl spot right Look there. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. Look at that. That's like like Jesus could just come out of that. Oh. That's amazing. <laughs> This brother's about to get nasty, but right now that is beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time. New hair. <laughs> so, um, when I was editing this video, I realized that I really didn't explain um, what happened there. I really wasn't apparent from the video because I didn't, um, I didn't capture that much on camera and I didn't include everything that I did capture. Um, so what had happened there was, um, Daniel didn't appreciate, I mean, Daniel didn't like the fact that I was enforcing a safety rule. Um, and he immediately went into a kind of a screaming fit meltdown um, where he proceeded to run into the house screaming at me, um, screaming, I don't, you know, I don't like this, it's so stupid. And um, I believe he said something along the lines of, you're the stupidest mom ever. Um, in a very angry, angry little boy voice. Um, and then he proceeded to come into the house and lock the, oh, I'm, I'm on a swivel chair. Sorry, that's a little, I'm sorry. I'll try to, I'll sit still. Um, he proceeded to come into the house and lock not only the front door, but the door um, to get into the house from the garage. So he locked me out of my house. <laughs> Stinker. Um, so I had to, of course, I didn't have keys outside with me. Um, I had to knock on the door and my nine-year-old Joseph came and let me in. When Daniel realized that his brother had let me in, he was very unhappy and started screaming again. And why did you do that? I didn't want you to do that. And anyway, he proceeded to get really, really ramped up, um, really, really started losing it then. And, um, thrashing around, throwing things, stomping around angrily, um, screaming. And I kind of caught him um, and brought him to the the smaller couch, the love seat, whatever. Brought him to the couch in um, the front room and it took a while to calm him down. Um, there was much screaming and writhing and kicking at me and um, just, he was really, really, really angry um, and just kind of out of control. And it took a long time before, um, it probably took about 15 or 20 minutes before he was calm enough to be able to talk about what happened and talk about why we had the safety rules and, you know, what could you have done to express your displeasure about said safety rules? Um, you know, it's a better way to deal with that than screaming and saying mean things and locking your mom out of the house. Not a good move, buddy. Not a good move. Um, anyway, so yeah. Anyway, it was it was quite a it was a big tantrum. Okay, it was a 
it was a big meltdown it was um he said a lot of mean things and it's really hard to hear <laughs> um it just it was really defeating and we had we had gotten off to a good start we'd had about a good hour of um getting through breakfast and starting the cleaning and I just stepped out to watch Hope practice for a little bit um, and it just spiraled down from there. It just spiraled out of control and the, the day really shifted um, and there was like a heavy weight over the rest of the day just because of how kind of emotionally draining that was to go through this really big meltdown over something that should have been so minor and simple. Um, Anyway, yeah, it was that was really hard. And so the day, the day was just shot. Like I, I really had have the mentality. I tried to. I said, okay, we can't let this ruin the rest of the day. It's not even noon yet. I mean, come on. There's so much day left. We can get back in the swing of things and we can um, redeem the day. And that was my intention. And I was so deflated, and he was so out of sorts the rest of the day. I mean, just everything set him off. Um, really, the day was basically shot. Um, we didn't get much done. Uh, we ended up doing a lot of speed cleaning the following morning before my in-laws showed up. Um, the house turned out okay. Daniel had a better day the next day, and um, it's all good now. Um, but I just wanted to share a little about what it's like some days. Um, with a child with an autism diagnosis and um yeah again it's something that i just haven't up until this point i really haven't talked much about it with anyone other than um a therapist i was seeing for a little while um who also had has a son with autism and we um we just got into a discussion one day about why it's so hard to talk about. Um, and I think that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video for another day um, or a big long blog post. Maybe it'll be better written out. I don't know. Um, so many thoughts swirling around in the head. Anyway, thanks for sticking around and hearing me ramble on about the meltdown um, that ruined our day. <laughs> Um, most days are okay. Um, we're not on the extreme end of the spectrum. And so I realized, you know, we're really, really blessed. Um, he's a really a great kid. Um, and I mean, I just, I love him to pieces. He is a neat kid. He is, he has the coolest sense of humor. He is like wicked smart and, um, essentially taught himself to read. And I am not even kidding about that. I have homeschooled. So he is my ninth child homeschooled eight children before him and taught to read some it took longer than others um i have never i said i've never seen this in action he taught himself to read and has bypassed his seven-year-old sister which has spurred her on to work harder but anyway um he's a great kid and uh so i don't want I don't want to come off like, um, or come across like, I don't want to come across like, um, I don't know, like we're, you know, disappointed with him or frustrated with him or anything. It just, it, I, but I just wanted to share that life with, um, life with autism, life with, I don't know, with difficult children, um, is draining and is hard. And, um, if you know a mom with a kid on the spectrum, um, I just, you know, would encourage you to encourage her, um, and always be understanding and willing to, um, extend grace and just know that, you know, if you, if you've never parented a child on the spectrum, um, you just don't you just don't know what they're going through <laughs> so um be nice be loving um have patience and grace and yeah 
anyway um, because we need it um, yeah I don't know what else to say I just wanted to I just wanted to add that note um, about this video and about that day and about that child and about our life <laughs> so I think that's all thanks for watching <laughs> Talking to a camera in your closet is awkward.